What is going on YouTube? Northeast Ohio Sports Cards. Here for something slightly different today. The channel turns one year old next week. And I decided to do a couple little take a walk down memory lane videos. So today I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes look on how and why I started the channel. The actual one year is next Tuesday. On Tuesday, I'm going to kind of talk about how the channel started content wise and how it's kind of turned into the beast that it's turned into. And then I think I might do another one next week about how I record, shoot, edit, whatever equipment that I use, that sort of thing. And part of this is to educate or maybe give some insight to those that want to think about or want to do this or are thinking about doing it or are already doing it. And part of it's just to kind of self-document, you know, for my own history, et cetera, for me to look back on as a point of reference. So it's a little different than my normal content, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you guys and girls will like this. Maybe you won't, but I, I think it might be interesting. I always find this stuff fascinating when the YouTubers that I watch kind of go behind the scenes and in the weeds, uh, if you will. So with all that being said, like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff down below. Affiliate links, all that stuff. Uh, let's dive in, shall we? And take a little walk down memory lane. So how did this whole thing get started? Well. My day job, which I don't talk about too, too often, is account management slash customer service for a healthcare adjacent company. And 90% of my job is spent in the field uh, visiting customers slash clients and playing customer service, face of the company type, troubleshooting, making sure the trains are running on time type of thing. So most of my day is spent in the car, traveling around a vast portion of the state of Ohio, making various visits. Well, the pandemic came and needless to say, those places and accounts that I visited said, we're not letting people inside anymore. So figure something else out. So the job. So the 90% road, 10% office job quickly flipped to 90% office, 10% road. And we were looking for projects at work to fill in the gaps since we had extra time on our hands. And one of those projects was recording training videos. Normally we did our training on site uh, face to face with the staff at the various accounts that we had. Well, that was out of the question now. So we decided to do some pre-recorded videos on a bunch of various different topics. Myself and one of my fellow coworkers locked ourselves in a conference room for a week, two weeks, and shot a bunch of video. Uh, she was in front of the camera. I was behind the camera. And I had some experience with photography, never shooting video. But I had a nice digital camera. Uh, I use a Canon Rebel T7i for just about everything since I got the Sony ZV-1 just recently. Most of the video, when you see video like on the desktop and stuff is shot with the Canon for the most part. So I got volunteered into doing that, which is I was fine with. It was fun. And then as part of that, I had to edit all the video. So I quickly had to teach myself how to video edit. You know, one monitor I'm editing video. The other monitor I have YouTube tutorials up on how DaVinci Resolve works because I had no idea how to edit video beyond a very passing knowledge of, you know, just futzing around an iMovie. So the pandemic rolls on, boredom continues to set in. And in the meantime, the card market is on fire. And I had been involved with it for over a year at that point uh, to varying different degrees of intensity. I was chasing retail very hard in the early days of the pandemic and even pre-pandemic, you know, when Optic hit mosaic, et cetera. And I was finding it fairly regularly. I had a pretty good pattern down and all that stuff. So I was able to find retail fairly consistently. And at the same time, I was consuming ton of other content creators, uh, you know, like Pac-Man cards, 502 Frank, 
uh, card collector to PSA collector, uh, sports card investor. Those were the main ones that I was watching every time they posted a video. And like you do when you're in basically lockdown and don't have anything else to do, you start getting crazy ideas in your head. And I said, I could do this. This is easy. I'll post some YouTube videos. So what did I do? Most of the stuff that I watched was box breaks. So set up the camera, put a couple blasters on the desk uh, and filmed like the worst box break I've ever seen in my life. I didn't have a good place to put the camera. I didn't have a proper tripod. So it was on a little desktop tripod on my keyboard tray, which I had pulled out and moved my keyboard off of to get the right angle. I'd knocked it over about three different times, uh, fumbled through opening the boxes, had no idea what to talk about or say. It was a pure disaster. Needless to say, that video has never seen the light of day. I don't even think it exists anymore. So I said, OK, screw this thing. This is way harder than it looks. Forget this. Uh, and this is, by the way, not factoring in that I had this stuff set up about three different times, would sit down the record and then just walk away because I couldn't figure out what to say, how to start the video. You know, all that stuff, stage fright, essentially recording in front of an audience of nobody. And I would just lock up and be like, I don't know what to say. I don't even know how to start the video. So I would just give up and walk away and then I would come back like an hour later and try again. So after that first disaster, I was like, OK, that clearly didn't work. And like a week later, I'm like, all right, let's try this again. So I sat down and recorded. I had, I had 40 blaster boxes of mosaic. I know. Sounds crazy. All bought at retail. And I had opened them all and I had everything in stacks. And I said, all right, let me do a recap video of 40 blaster boxes worth of mosaic. Kind of like what like Run Good Life would do sometimes. Without I didn't like go through all the financial analysis like he does. It was more just, uh, hey, here's my hits from 40 blasters. How, here's how many key rookies I got, that sort of stuff. And that turned out OK. And that was the first video that I posted. May 18th, 2020. Hits from 40 blaster boxes worth of mosaic. LeBron James color question mark. At least I knew clickbait titles back then, uh, but I didn't know clickbait thumbnails. Uh, it's probably hard to see because I'm not super zoomed in on the screen here, but you could see the thumbnail on that video is just a picture of a Jason Tatum mosaic Genesis card. And that's it. The poorly cropped and everything. Kind of glad I kept all this stuff because it's fun to look at. And it got a whopping 165 views and it's been up for a year. Six likes. Six. Uh, and we were off and running from there. You know, I, I'm not going to go down the deep dive of, you know, how the content shifted and things I learned in that. We'll talk about that on the video on Tuesday. But that is simply the who, what, when, where and why that this whole beast got started because of a side work project that basically forced me to learn video editing and uploading them to YouTube. Because that's what I was doing with the training videos was uploading them to YouTube and then sending them to my bosses to review that was just the easiest way to do it because we were work from home for a good portion of that time. And uh, got bored one day and fired up the camera. I will say once you get the first one under your belt, it gets easier. The first one was the hardest. And I'm not even talking about the one that I threw away, like the real first one that I uploaded. Just getting through that and getting those first couple sentences out, you know, the the cliche thing that you hear all the time that goes around YouTube is, is just hit the record button. Just hit record. Uh, it sounds cheesy, but it's kind of right. You just got to kind of do it if you want to do it. It's not easy. Uh, it's hard to gain traction. It could be frustrating at times when you post videos and you get 20 views, like you look at four or five videos down there. Uh, 20 views on a video, 33 views on a video. Uh, and it especially gets frustrating if you have a little success with one and then it kind of just falls apart on the next one. Maybe you get over 100 for the first time and then the next video gets 25. And you're like, well, screwed that one up. I'm done. I'm done. I quit. So you got to fight through that stuff and it can be hard. Uh, and you have to have a certain mentality I think to just not look at that stuff and just keep going and then it just slowly starts to snowball 
Uh, I never thought that it would turn into what it has turned into. If you told me then, like my subscriber and view numbers that I have now in a year, basically, that I would be at almost 9,000 subscribers a year into the channel, I would have told you you were crazy. My first goal was to get to basically post the next video. My first real goal was to get to 100. Uh, and I remember getting to 100, and then my my next real goal was 1,000, but I thought that would take a year, honestly. Uh, I thought that would take an entire year to get to 1,000. And then you hit 1,000, and then you go for 2,000. Then there's this weird middle ground where you kind of forget about it for a while until you get to 5,000. At least that's how it was for me. Uh, and then the 1,000 marks become less relevant, and you start thinking about 10,000. And like I said, when I started the channel, I never planned for it to be here. I never planned to be monetized. I never thought that this could legitimately turn into a hobby adjacent thing for income to potentially fund the hobby, whether it's comic books or cards or a mix of both. Uh, some of the people that I've got a chance to talk to appear as a guest on Sports Card Investor. Like, I never thought that would happen. Here's a guest on Reggie Collects. I never thought that would happen. It's been a wild ride. I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's for sure. And I have no idea where it goes from here. But uh, that's just a little background. That's the who, the like I said, the who, what, when, where, and why, essentially, for how this started. It started out of boredom, and then it quickly turned into something else. And like I said, we'll talk about that on the Tuesday video. On the actual one-year anniversary on Tuesday, the 18th, um, I'm going to go more in depth on how the content shifted and, you know, where we've gone and where we've come from and that whole nine yards. So if that sort of stuff interests you, uh, there'll be that video on Tuesday. We will do the behind the scenes video one day later next week, just kind of talking about the equipment that I use, the software that I use, how I've changed that those sorts of processes and stuff. So if you're interested in either maybe starting your own channel, maybe this is helpful for you. Or like I said, I think a lot of people just find this stuff kind of interesting. I know I personally do for the other YouTubers that I watch. But uh, yeah, that's how I kind of fell into this. It was basically by happenstance. There was a lot of luck along the way, and we will talk about that. Uh, I made a couple smart decisions. Got very lucky on a couple things. Uh, and that there's really two key moments, in my opinion, that kind of flip the switch, if you will. We'll talk about those on Tuesday. So uh, that's all I got for you guys and girls today. Just a quick little video kind of going behind the scenes a little bit. So uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you guys like this kind of stuff. Like, is this even remotely interesting or are you like, okay, let's get back to some charts and graphs and some sports card or comic book ramblings. Uh, or if you're interested in the YouTube behind the scenes nonsense. And if anyone is either just started a channel thinking about starting a channel or has a well-established channel, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know all the answers. I don't. In the grand scheme of things, I am a very small YouTube channel, but uh, I'll, help you out where I can, when I can, uh, whether it's just a simple question or you wanted to bounce an idea off me or whatever. Uh, I've talked to people that are just starting out and I've talked to people that have more subscribers than me, just kind of bouncing things back and forth. Hey, how does this work for you? Have you ever run into this before? And that sort of stuff's helpful because we're all dealing with like the YouTube content creator community. We're all dealing with the same stuff. We all probably have the same questions. You just got to be afraid not to ask them. So uh, but that's all I got. I am uh, heading out to the Hartville Card Show on Saturday and most likely the Strongsville Card Show on Sunday. So maybe I will see some of you there. If you see a guy roaming around with a camera in his hand, decent chance it's me. Don't assume, but you never know. Uh, but once again, that's all I got for you guys and girls. Catch you on the next one. Peace.